Hello, I'm Landon Schlingen, and today we're going to go through basic data structures in JavaScript. We just got done with debugging, and now we're doing basic data structures. What are data structures? Data can be stored and accessed in many different ways, both in JavaScript and other languages. This section will teach us how to manipulate arrays as well as access and copy the information within them. It will also teach us how to manipulate and access the data within JavaScript objects using both dot and bracket notation. So let's just get right into it. First lesson, use an array to store a collection of data. So we've been doing this already. All we want to do is copy this over and make it five long. So we'll just keep these five because we need one string, one number, and one boolean, and that does that. So, yep. Access an array's contents using bracket notation. We'll grab my array, use bracket notation, and grab the first index, which is B, and we'll set it equal to U, just anything we want, and run that. Yep. Add items to an array with push and unshift. Here we want to grab the array and do dot shift unshift on it. And we want to add i, and I'll just copy this down a couple times. We want to add two, and we want to add three to the beginning. And then we'll do r dot push, and we'll push some things to the end. We'll push seven. Actually, we'll push the number seven and the number two as well. We'll push v i i i, which is eight in Roman numerals and then nine. And I'm guessing we want I two, three. So actually want to unshift three first and then two and then I. And now it's in the correct, correct order and run that. Yep. Remove items from an array with pop and shift. Pop will take things off the back of the array. Shift will take things off the front. So we'll go array.pop here and that will take off complete and put it here. And then we want to do with shifted array.shift and that'll take challenge and put it here. And then it'll return shifted or it'll return challenge and complete like it does down here. So let's run that. Yep. Remove items using splice, another array method. So we'll do array.splice and we want to splice away the two and we want to splice away seven, five, two, and one. So how do we do that? Well, we specify our first index that we want um, to keep. In this case, it's one. So we're going to get rid of two by specifying that we want to skip that one by doing one. And then we want to get this one as well, but we want to specify this one in the splice method. So that would be zero, one, two, three, four. So we'll go one, four, and that should get us an array of four, five, one which it actually doesn't. Oh, because we want to remove stuff from it. So we'll go zero to one, and then we'll have another array dot splice of four to, or three to, three to the end of the array. If you don't specify one, then it just does to the end. So yeah, now array is just four, five, one. Let's try this. Yep. Add items using splice. We can actually add items using splice with the third argument of the method. So we'll go array.splice and we want to remove the first two elements and add in dark salmon and blanched almond in their places. So we'll start at zero, go to two to get rid of the first two, and then we'll add in dark salmon and blanched almond. And now that now we see the array looks like this. Dark salmon blanched almond at the beginning. Let's try that. Yep. Copy array items using slice. So I think what I was trying to do before with splice was actually slice. So we just do array.slice and then we put in what indexes we want. In this case, we want warm and sunny, which is in the middle of here. So we'll grab the third spot and the fourth spot and we'll set that to a variable called array. Actually, we'll do new array and we'll return that new array. Oh, right now it's just getting sunny. We want warm and sunny. So we'll go two to four. There we go. And that should work. Yep. Copy an array with the spread operator. Here we want to turn one, two, three array, and that's specified with five of them. We want to turn it into five of those arrays. So we'll make a copy machine by doing that. Uh, we'll do new array dot push, and then we'll spread in the array. And there we go. Now we have two true false trues in this one array. Let's try that. Yep. Combine arrays with the spread operator. For this challenge, we want to copy this array and then have sentence equal this array. And then two code is the same as the one here. So we just want to spread in that array instead of having that. So we'll just do dot 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 fragment here instead and it will turn into the same thing it was before. Learning to code is fun. Let's try that. Yep. Check for the presence of an element with index of. Index of is very useful for checking if a element is inside of an array. So here we want to check if mushrooms is in this array and we can do that with index of. So we'll return, we'll return index of element on that array. So we'll go array dot index of element. And we see right now that that's negative one because it's not in it. If it was in it, then it would be one or it'd at least be positive number. I know if it was in it, then it would return where it is in the array. So basically if it's not in it, then we know that it's negative one. So we'll just do array dot index of element is less than zero. Or actually we'll do greater than negative one because that makes more sense because we're checking if mushrooms in, is in here and it's returning false. If we do squash, then it returns true because squash is zero. So this evaluates to zero and zero is greater than negative one. So it'll return true. So let's try that out. 
Yep. Iterate through all an array's items using for loops. For the challenge, we want to get rid of any arrays that contain the number three. So we would get rid of this one, we'd get rid of this one, we'd get rid of this one. Actually, we'd get rid of all of them. But the way to check that would be to use for loops. So we'll do a for loop that starts at i equal to zero, i less than array dot length, and then i plus plus, and open up that for loop. And then we actually need another for loop because it's a nested array. So we'll go for let j equal i, j less than i dot length. We actually want j equal to zero and j less than z j less than i? Oh, j less than array i dot length. And then j plus plus and open up that one. And then we want to check if array i j equals the ele element that's passed. And if it is, then we want to do new array dot push. Maybe we can do array dot splice at that index of i until i plus one. Actually, no. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a found variable up here. So we'll let found equal false at the start. Then we'll set found equal to true. We'll do if not found. Then we want to do new array dot push the array of that index. So right there, it's an empty array. If I change one of these numbers, if I change this three to a two, then that array is in there. So that's, I think, what we wanted, and this should work. So again, we go through every element in the array by doing these two for loops here, and we check every single item in the nested array by doing array ij, and we check if it's equal to the element. If it is, then found equals true, and that means that this three is in that array, and what we want to do is if it's not found, so if all of these are different than that one, and then return it after we go through every single one. Let's try it. So we create a complex multi-dimensional array. Here they have a really complex multi-dimensional array and they want us to do that by, in the third level, include the string deep. In the fourth level, include the string deeper. And fifth level, include the string deepest. So I'll do that quick and see what I come up with. All right, I think I did it because this outermost array is level one, then this would be level two, then level three, and then we want to have deep somewhere in level three, and then we go even deeper to level four, put deeper than there, and then we go even deeper with level five, and we put deepest. So let's try that. Sweet. Add key value pairs to JavaScript objects. So this is pretty easy. All we want to do is add in bananas, grapes, and strawberries. Bananas with a value of 13, grapes with a value of 35, and strawberries with a value of 27. But of course, we don't want to do it on the actual object. We want to do it outside of the object. So to do that, we'll do foods and then bracket notation equals 13 and semicolon for each of these. And also with bracket notation, they have to be in strings. And there we go, now it works. Let's try that. Yep, modify an object nested within an object. So here we want to set the online category to 45. And the way we can go about that is by grabbing our user activity, grabbing the data out of that, and then grabbing the online part and setting it equal to 45. In the other challenge, I could have used dot notation as well, but I use bracket notation for some reason. And this works as well, so let's try that. Yep, access property names with bracket notation. So like I said, with bracket notation, we'll grab the foods object and we'll do bracket notation on it, scanned items or scanned item. And we will return that because if we don't return it, then we can't call it to log it. It's just nothing is returned. So it's undefined if we don't return it. But yeah, let's try that. Yep, use the delete keyword to remove object properties. Here we'll delete the oranges, plums, and strawberries. So we'll delete foods.oranges first and then plums and then strawberries. Try that out. Yep, check if an object has a property. This is done with the dot has own property method. And for the challenge, we want to check if Alan, Jeff, Sarah, and Ryan are in this object. We could use the has own property or we can do the Alan in users syntax. I think I'll actually try doing this. Alan in object. We want to check Jeff and Sarah and Ryan and we'll return if they're all in it. So we'll do that with the ands. So we'll move Jeff up here, we'll move Sarah up here, and we'll move Ryan up here. Get rid of the semicolons. And there we go, there it's true. If we get rid of an F on Jeff, then it's false and now it's true again let's try it yep iterate through the keys of an object with a for in statement for in statement looks like this and we want to check for the challenge how many people are online and we'll do that with a for in statement so we'll do for let user in users object and then we'll check if the user is online so if user dot online then we want to increment a count that we define up here so let count equals zero and then we'll return that count at the end so that should be correct let's try it out nope oh, i think what we actually have to do is do since user will get alan jeff and sarah and not their object we'll instead do users object bracket notation user dot online and I think that might. Let's try it. Yep. There we go. Generate an array of all object keys with object.keys. So I'm guessing for this challenge, all we have to do is do object.keys and then pass in the object with this object. And we want to return that. And there it gives us Alan, Jeff, Sarah, and Ryan, which seems correct. Let's try it. 
Yep. Modify an array stored in an object. For the challenge, we want to get to this friends array and add a friend. We want to do that with this add friend function. So we'll take the user object, we'll grab the data from it, we'll grab the friends and we'll push on the friends or the friend and then we'll return the user object dot data dot friends. And there we added Pete to the end of this array, even though Pete's not up here at the start. So let's try that. Yep. And there we go. We completed basic data structures. Next up is introduction to basic algorithm scripting. So yeah, we did all of these basic data structure challenges. I hope you learned something. Some of it was repeat from basic JavaScript, but there was some new stuff in here as well. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.